today we have with us Dee Evans, and she is the founder of Juneteenth Nevada. That's one title. I'm going to let her break down the rest of them for you. So please welcome June. Uh, Thank you for having me. Well, let's see. Name is, uh, is Deborah Evans. They call me D. I am the vice chair of the National Juneteenth Observance Foundation Board of Directors. I am the national communications director also for the, org for the organization National Juneteenth Observance Foundation. And... And the one that I said, the, the founder. And the founder and president of Juneteenth Nevada here in Nevada Las Vegas. Okay. So what is it, first, for those of us who don't know what Juneteenth is, tell us what that is. Okay. And also, what is it about it that you've made, you develop, to dedicate this much of your life to it? I made a commitment. No, no, it was, tell it, us what Juneteenth is. For okay. Those who may not Juneteenth know recognizes June 19th, 1865, Galveston, Texas. At that point, the, the myth is that General Granger rode into town on a horse, went up on the balcony, read General Order Number 3, and said, Slaves, you all are free. You've been free for two and a half years, and we're, giving, we're going to let you, we're telling you. Well, I have an education group that, I, that we have it within the National Juneteenth Organization. We have now discovered, first of all, because I, was, I really wasn't the best on geography, Galveston is an island. Granger came in on a ship. Granger either did not get off the ship or he did not go through town, but he definitely did not walk up on this balcony. What happened was, you read the stories, it said Granger stood up, it tells you federal uh, soldiers came through the town. They do not tell you that the federal soldiers were 50% were, uh, United States colored troops. We had three to 6,000 black soldiers in Galveston on June 19th, 1865. They went back to the ship and said, now these are stories that we've gotten from the descendants of the people in Galveston. You're going to do something to make sure these people are free before we leave, or we'll do something. They, were, they did not go to Galveston to free the slaves. They were on their way to Mexico-Texas border to fight Maximilian. Okay. They, they ran into a storm. from. There was 10 ships, I believe. Okay. They ran into... 6,000. Like, that's a whole lot of... No, there was, there, there was actually... Yeah, we had... We had um, I think there was 10 ships, and in, in, Mex in, in the state of Texas, we had, there were 10,000 people. We had six, but the, we, we have actually documented from official military records 6,000 soldiers of black African descent in Galveston on that date. Uh, again, they were on their way to, to Mexico, Texas border. Uh, they, they, they ran into a storm. They stopped for food and water. They bivouacked uh, uh, for a couple of days in uh, in Galveston, uh, they arrived on the morning of the 19th of June, and he and General Granger, Major General Granger, had Major Emery write to General Order Number Three, and and they posted it on the wall of the Little Colored Church, which is now known as Reedy Chapel, and they have an anniversary. They have a um, they have a, pr a program every year recognizing. The freedom from from that point. Um, so the people on this island were still slaves. They were shipping them to Texas, which was at that point pretty much the farthest point you could get from Washington, from the east east colonies. Uh, again, looking back at it, we let's start sixteen nineteen real quick. We did not come to this country and English colonies as a slave. We were not enslaved. The first 20 Africans came to this country. They were warriors who had wa lost the war, had been sold off to, uh, 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 and they were on a ship. They were brought to this country as, um, as, as they were uh, servants. They were, but they were not enslaved. They, they, whew, my mind just went off again. They, but they, they only had indentured. They were indentured, indentured. service. And they had seven to ten years that they had to work, and then they were free. They married, they intermarried, they raised their families. Uh, slavery did not come to the English uh, colonies until about 40 years later. 
when one man decided he did not want to let go of his indentured servant. Mm. He went to court. He got control of the man for life. And the owner of this man was a black man. A black man actually started the slavery, whoa, 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 whoa. Went, to, went, to the, went to court because he did not want to let another man go free. I yeah. have never heard that. Well, let me, let me see what other quick story. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, 1841, 20 years before he became president, he went to the Illinois Supreme Court. Now, you don't think of Illinois as a slave state. He went to court to get the freedom of Nance Leggins Costly. He got her freedom. At the time, she had three children, two girls and a boy. The boy was 10 months old. We found her son in the records in Galveston as one of those 6,000 U.S. colored troops serve, uh, soldiers in Galveston, Texas on the day of, of, the, of uh, the freedom. So she was the first, she was actually the first slave, in, the person enslaved, freed by Lincoln, and her son was the first male person. This freed is Lincoln the lawyer. Lincoln the lawyer, 1841, before he went to the White House. Um, but that wasn't the end of slavery. The Indians maintained slavery for another year. They did not, they signed a treaty of the so-called five civilized nations in the Western territories. Uh, in June of 1866. At that time, the United States didn't want to have anything to do with them. The Indians did not want to be, be connected to them. They went on to found 100 black towns, mostly in the Western territories, most of them in Oklahoma. Uh, of the 88 Oklahoma towns, there are still 12 of them left. Who, who did the Indians enslave? They enslaved black people. They People that had escaped or had been sold to them uh, by, by, by slave owners from the East as, the, as they moved across the, veil, the, the Trail of Tears. You know, some of them brought, brought slaves with them or whatever. You hear about the Underground Railroad. They went to Canada. Did you know there were two Underground Railroads? There was a Southern Underground Railroad that went across the South into California. And these are things I did not know 20 years ago. This, this is stuff that Dr. Myers taught me uh, or he started my education, and Steve Williams, our president, he's a brainiac. Uh, he, if you bring up a subject, he has a story to tell about whatever. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Oklahoma. He's got, he had a grandfather or a great-grandfather that had eight wives and 52 grandchildren. And so he's got relatives all over. Wow is right. I didn't believe him. I had to, I had to look up his grandfather. Uh, I, you know, uh, so you, you were like uh, the pre Google, <laughs> pre Google. I had to go you I, ask D, she'll find out for I, you. And I'm still part of the research team for the education group. Wow, I still go, I've got my subscriptions to newspapers.com and Ancestry, and I still do research to find this because we do not tell the story of Juneteenth without being able to back it up, and we can come up with that newspaper article or with the article from the army that says. You know, this is what happened. So is there a place where th th this information lives now? We're putting it. We have a Juneteenth 101 pamphlet. Uh, we have a teacher's edition. We are doing a new version for the Miss Juneteenth uh, scholarship uh, young ladies. And we are researching Juneteenth 201, the next evolution. 101 covers 1862 to 1867. And now we're picking up additional history, and we're looking for uh, researchers that can help us in every state. We um, have a director in every state that, that, that we, you know, we call upon. We do weekly meetings. So every week, if you can call in on our conference line at 12 o'clock uh, Central, which is 10 o'clock here in Las Vegas, we have a 90-minute, two-hour meeting, and we trade stories, and we trade ways of recognizing and commemorating Juneteenth. And Miss Opal is in Texas. Uh, Opal is in Texas, and uh, as you know, she did the walking. She she's the one. She started in 2016 uh, when she was 89 years old, I believe, walking for attention to Juneteenth. She got the petition started. We ended up with 1.6 million signatures on the Juneteenth petition that was taken to the Senate. Uh, 
in the, at the end of uh, 20, 2020. And at that time, we, we in June of 2020, we missed the Juneteenth legislation by one vote. It would have been unanimous. In 2021, we got the call that we're, Steve had, Steve was working in the halls of Congress. He was working with the Repub uh, with the uh, senators and the representatives and worked out a deal that we had the recognition from Opal's walking. I'm I'm the I'm the one that sits on the telephone and everything comes through me. I'm I'm the matrix. Okay. I'm the sitting duck. Steve and Opal are the two that move, but we got a call that said. The Senate is, which normally everything goes through the House of Representatives and then goes to the Senate for approval. Steve worked so hard and got the story told so well that it went through the Senate first. They told the House of Representatives, we have passed this as a no-finding bill. We have a state legislation, and at that time it was 47 states and the District of Columbia. Everyone knows about Juneteenth. We're not going to have to worry about going through all the stages. We have a number of years left before, I think it's five years before we have to fill in the paperwork. But they unanimously passed it in the Senate. We got 415 votes in the, in the House. Uh, so it was like Wednesday, the Senate, Thursday, the, the, the House, uh, Friday, the, no, maybe it must have been Tuesday, Wednesday. Year, right? Yeah, this was all last year. Yeah. And they're saying, well, the, the president is overseas. When he comes back, he's going to go to Galveston and sign the Juneteenth bill. Didn't happen that way. Opal got a call at 3 in the morning and said, you got to get to Washington because he signed the bill tomorrow afternoon. So they got her on the plane in the middle of the night. She got to Washington, was able to sit at the table with the president. People who went to the post office on Friday morning to pick up Juneteenth flags and different paper things that we had shipped out, found a sign on the post office door saying, closed for the holiday. <laughs> you know, that, that, that really hurt a little few things. But they had used a, a system that uh, that last unnamed president had established to get messages out to federal employees that says, you're off work tomorrow because there's a holiday. So, at this point in time, our goal is education. People are happy, they've got a holiday, they're going to the park, but they do not know what Juneteenth is. So at this time, we have to teach them that there was a time you could not read. Mm -hmm. Now you, you can read, but you won't read. Mm -hmm. uh, why you, you know, that your, your, your ancestors were probably enslaved. Mm -hmm. uh, study your family, pass and pass the word on. We were telling them about the music from Africa to America, the sounds of, of how the drums and the bass is the, is the heartbeat of the music, and just move forward. So that's where I am today. This this year, as as last year, I have uh, will have approximately 20 different events going on. Uh, this year, what I am adding, last year I had, I had a uh, Juneteenth walk, and uh, we, we had a drum circle. This year we kind of re we're we made a few changes. I'm having a unity powwow this year. Okay. We're gonna have a powwow and we're gonna bring some Buffalo soldiers in the Ninth and Tenth Cavalry. We're gonna bring them together at the powwow to make peace with the Indians. We're also doing a day where the hip hop community will be working. Uh, they will be performing, but we're gonna introduce them to Woody Woods our music director, and we're going to give them a lesson of where their music came from. Again, the, all those raps that came came from the 1920s uh, and the musicians of the 20s, uh, the Harlem Renaissance, Isaac Hayes coming forward. We're going to show them that they did not invent these things, that this is something that was embedded that they've heard as children and what to do with it. So we're doing, so it's a unity weekend that will be at the College of Southern Nevada uh, on the West Charleston campus, that's June 10th and 11th. We're going to be at the West Las Vegas Library on June 5th, uh, where we're going to be doing music from the Belly of the Slave Ship, our parts three, uh, where we're going to be featuring female uh, performers. We're going to be at the Henderson Water Street on the 19th, Father's Day. We're going to have a Father's Day Juneteenth program. Uh, June 19th, the first Father's Day was June 19th, 1910. So, and it's also World Sickle Cell Day. So June 19th has three holidays in one that, that will be recognized this year. 
And again, they will be at uh, they will be at Water Street uh, the day before. We will be at um, Whitney Recreation Center on the 18th. We're going to have a networking. We're going to have vendors. We're going to have uh, uh, networking between the, the community uni communities within the uh, area that they will hold conversations and and talk to the, to the neighbors. Uh, we're also doing. Four flag raisings. We'll have a flag flying over the city of North Las Vegas, the city of Las Vegas, the city of Henderson, and we're going to have a flag raised at the Martin Luther King statue also in North Las Vegas. So you just need like maybe two more events. The this. <laughs> actually, I got them. Actually, uh, it appears that I'm. I'm My website is JuneteenthNevada.org. Uh, the national uh, website is njof.org, and uh, you can download information from the national website. You can download the Juneteenth 101. You can download the various resources you need for your Juneteenth event. You want to make a donation? It's njofnv1. Oh. Yeah, we've got we've got PayPal.me uh, forward slash uh, njofnv1. We have for the national, if they want to make a donation to the national, it's uh, paypal.me forward slash in, uh, national Juneteenth. You can also donate to national through the cash app, uh, which is dollar sign national Juneteenth. Uh, we have, an, there's Miss, Miss Juneteenth, ha, ha, they have a donation site for that. Well, thank you, Deborah Evans. Thank you. Deborah D. Evans. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this has uh, been Conversations the Journey. I'm your host, Ellis Rice, and we will be back for the next Conversations. Thank you very much. Peace. Thank you.